Are you ready to take your business to the next level? Every day, there are countless books and articles that are published offering the key on how to make your business a success. It's easy to feel overwhelmed trying to keep up and run your business. That's why Deb Creer created the Business Power Hour. Keep up on the latest trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. Let the Business Power Hour do the heavy work for you. Good morning, good morning. I am Deb Creer, and I am passionate about giving professionals the tools that they need to make themselves and their businesses as successful as possible. And we're gonna have a great conversation today because we're not talking about hardcore business things like how to design your website and how to do direct mail and you know many of those things. We're gonna be talking about what's going on in your heart, your head, and your soul because Let's face it, folks, you can have the greatest product, the greatest service in the world, a great team, great business, but if you're not right between your ears and in your heart, it's not going to matter. And so please join me in welcoming Matt Spielman to our program today. Welcome, Matt. How are you doing? Oh, uh, Deb, I am doing really well. It's great to be here. I've been looking forward to this all week. You know, thank you so much. We're going to have so much fun. And so let me tell people a little bit about you and then we'll dive into this. So Matt Spielman is the founder and head coach of the performance coaching firm Inflection Point Partners, where he combines decades of senior executive experience with extensive training. He is a graduate of the Columbia Coaching Certification Program. He studied at Duke's School of Integrative Medicine to become a national board certified health and wellness coach. And he received his MBA from Harvard Business School, you know, that little school, and a BA from Columbia University. Again, another one of those small schools. Matt just released his new book, Inflection Points, How to Work and Live with Purpose. And we're really going to be talking about it, but everything else that, that you know, pertains to Matt. So again, Matt, welcome. Oh, it's great to be here, Deb. Thank you. Well, I always like to start my program with asking my guests how they got to where they are today, because I love learning about how you discovered, and this is a really funny twist, on how you know that this is your passion in life, mm. because that's actually yeah. going to be what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, Deb, it was an absolute straight line. I knew always what I wanted to do. <laughs> when you were four and years I, old, oh, you I, went. <laughs> yes. I said, that's Carnegie Hall. I want to play violin there. And mm -hmm. that's been my, my sole focus for the last 40 years. No, it's been a circuitous road. Um, I guess given the number of years, I, I guess it's been a long road, mm -hmm. but Deb, it's been a road guided by energy, passion, uh, excitement, and you know, passion is, is, is woven in there. And with each step that I took, mm -hmm. I got closer to exercising, expressing the mm -hmm. things that give mm -hmm. me energy that, ignite me that light me up um and it was there were some step functions in there there were some right turns there were some left turns and then over the last six years it was about two, 2016 deb where i launched inflection point partners after taking off much of that year going back to school mm -hmm. learning about executive and organizational coaching and mm -hmm. getting some other trainings i really wanted to do it right mm -hmm. but i had discovered that the coaching conversation that one-on-one -on -one connection and, and one to a team and one to a group mm -hmm. is how I wanted to spend my time. Right. I love it. You know, and one of the things, now I read your book, so I know the answer to this, but <laughs> what about inflection point? What does that mean? Because that really is very key to everything that you do. Yeah, I think, so it, it was born out of, it was probably 10 years ago, I was mm -hmm. running with a mentor of mine, a former CEO, where I was a chief marketing officer of this company called Return Path. Mm -hmm. And we were running and I was saying, Matt, I, his name is Matt also. I want to write a blog about uh, this point where I am in my career. And I was thinking about this next step and, and several steps. And the more I was talking about my inflection point, I call it an inflection point at that time because it's there's a point in time. And if people can think about an X, Y mm -hmm. axis, you mm -hmm. know, there's a point of where you are in that particular moment. Mm -hmm. Based upon the decisions that you make and the actions that you embark upon, mm -hmm. you can go in different directions. Right. So at any given time, mm -hmm. so I was describing him an inflection point that I had and where mm -hmm. I was. Mm -hmm. 
And he started telling me about where Return Path was and the inflection point that that company sat, mm -hmm. and also something going on in his family. And there was the, he, the family was at an inflection point. Right. And I realized it wasn't really so much about me and my inflection point mm -hmm. that any individual, any family, any organization, any state, any country, and we're all at some type of inflection point where the decisions that we make right. and the actions that we take mm -hmm. are going to determine where we end up. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's universal and it applies mm -hmm. to all. Right. And those can be, you know, short term or truly long term th type of, of things. Yeah. I mean, they, they can absolutely be, you know, oftentimes with our clients, we create something called the game plan, which is part mm -hmm. of a larger game plan system or GPS mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the acronym for short. Uh, the, the double entendre for direction is intentional. Mm, right. mm -hmm. And in this document, it's a generally, and I'm holding up for the audience, mm -hmm. it's a single page, we, we often laminate it, mm -hmm. document which houses four goals where mm -hmm. people, they set at an inflection point where they are. Mm -hmm. And to your point, Deb, I often find that one of the goals may be by the end of the year, they want to mm -hmm. bring something about. Right. And that, the next column may mm -hmm. be in two years, we want mm -hmm. to bring something about. Mm -hmm. I was talking to a client of mine last week. We set a 10-year goal mm -hmm. um, that was juxtaposed to a six-month goal. So mm -hmm. yes, some of them can be very short-term mm -hmm. uh, and they also can be longer-term. Right. And I'm working with a client now that we're creating a 50-year mm -hmm. sort of vision for him. Mm -hmm. um, and then these micro goals or more micro goals are mm -hmm. working in service of that 50-year vision. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and... I think now's a good point to talk about goals. I mean, because that really mm. is going to be the, this whole conversation. And you have a great acronym, ACHIEVE. Mm. Yeah. And so tell us a little bit more because, you know, I, I, we all, sometimes we, we just kind of go randomly about. We don't have goals. And back to your GPS, you know, if you don't give your GPS an end destination, even if it's, you know, four blocks away, it can't get you there. And that's a goal. I mean, you know, you have to know Absolutely. what you're aiming for before you can even start. So talk to us about your achieve model. Yeah. And and because it's it's more detailed than what a lot of people do. They think, oh, I'm gonna go from A to B and my B C. No, no, it's lots more complicated. So it, it's a little bit more complicated, yet it's when people hear it's very about intuitive. It, mm -hmm. it, it's yeah. So it, it's it's for people, it makes a lot of sense. And the reason why there's a little bit more meat on the bones here, mm -hmm. and it's a little bit more robust, mm -hmm. because exactly what you just said, you plug in the coordinates of, uh, coordinates of where you want to go into your mm -hmm. GPS. And invariably, when you take a drive, may not be four blocks, but if you take a drive, there's going to be what? Traffic. Mm -hmm. There may be accidents, God forbid. There's going to be something, friction points, blockades that are going to get in the way if we right. stick with that metaphor. Mm -hmm. And always, if we set a meaningful and consequential goal, there are going to be things that are going to get in the way. Mm -hmm. So I felt like it needed the, the goal setting, goal achieving model. Mm -hmm. Who cares about goal setting? Goal achieving is much more important. Mm -hmm. It needed to be a little bit, uh, have a little bit more teeth to it, a little bit more strength. Right. So yes, many people in the audience have probably heard of the acronym SMART and right. SMART goals. And mm -hmm. I think it's pretty smart. And mm -hmm. I think it's been, I think it's been used right. pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, for the last few decades mm -hmm. and however people set goals around let's say new year's resolutions and how many do you think actually see the light of day beyond three or four weeks i know if even that long yeah you know and exactly. and even if it's you know you, you have the grand lofty ones i'm gonna lose 200 pounds yeah. <laughs> you know? right. um and or yeah. become a better person i mean you know all of those or just you know simple things but yeah, yeah new year's it, resolutions exactly. never work so in in re and as a performance coach, I really want to work in service of my clients so they can actually bring about what it is that they that is meaningful to them that they really want to realize. So I dove in, I went back to the, uh, 1950 and I read books on Locke and Latham who are considered the, the fathers of goal setting theory, mm -hmm. dove into positive psychology, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I wrote a paper on it for to graduate from that, that coaching certification program mm -hmm. at Columbia and the Achieve model was born. Mm -hmm. And I, I can put it up on screen for those mm -hmm. who are watching and I'll, I'll just, I'll talk people mm -hmm. through it. It's it's an acronym, it's Achieve, mm -hmm. A-C-H-I-E-V-E. -E. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, th there's more here, but very quickly, the A stands for, let's set a goal that you can actually control. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people may say, I wanna get promoted. Right. 
okay, there's, we can't always bring that about. Like we, mm -hmm. we can't control that. We can put ourselves in position. Right. To you can take steps to hopefully become Absolutely. promoted. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We can identify what the Delta mm -hmm. is between where we are today and where we're tomorrow and then get specific about those key items. So mm -hmm. let's 300 sunny days in Colorado is a wonderful goal for us, but we can't do much to action right. against mm -hmm. it. So that's A. C is, and this is probably the most important one though. I, I love all my letters equally, but mm -hmm. this may be the one that stands out is it needs to be meaningful and consequential mm -hmm. to you. Right. So Deb, this is not something that your friend tells you that you should do. Mm -hmm. You should run a marathon. It was a great experience for me. Right. I think you should have the same type of experience. No. You know how long that lasts? <laughs> a month and a half into training, you wake up at 5.30 in the morning, it's 11 degrees outside, mm -hmm. it's raining. Mm -hmm. You yeah. turn over, you hit the snooze button. Yeah, you know, good for them, a, but no. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> It should be a hard goal. Mm -hmm. It should be, but not impossible. So right. H is hard, but mm -hmm. not, but not Herculean. Right. The integrated goal is interesting where the goal setting theory says that if you work the, if you have more than one goal, mm -hmm. that if one working in service of one helps you work in service of another, mm -hmm. that gives you the greatest chance mm -hmm. of them both coming to fruition. Right. So maybe in that, you know, I want to put myself in a position to get promoted. Mm -hmm. I also really love learning subjects. I want to set a goal around learning a new programming language. Ah, mm -hmm. and so I may work working in service of the programming mm -hmm. language may help put me in a position to get promoted. Mm -hmm. That's an integrated goal. Mm -hmm. um, we want to be explicit about the goal. So right. if one does have a weight loss or a body mm -hmm. composition goal, it's better to put percentages or right. pounds or mm -hmm. something in there. Yeah. So I want to lose we, weight. Yeah. <laughs> right. So because ultimately, Deb, we need to be able to answer the question if you're checking in with yourself or mm -hmm. somebody else or with your coach, how are we pacing against the goal? Right. If it's not quantified, and not everything can be quantified, but that's that's mm -hmm. that's the objective here. Mm -hmm. Athletes have so visual visualization or visualized. Right. Athletes have been power uh, tapping into the power of visualization mm -hmm. for decades. Mm -hmm. Why not us? Right. So we do some work around. Okay, Deb, when you have achieved that goal, or even when, if you're working on that goal, mm -hmm. what is the image that comes to mind that crystallizes mm -hmm. that outcome that right. you're working towards? Mm -hmm. And it's just tapping into the power of visualization. Mm -hmm. So the last, the letter is E, any good goal needs to have a time horizon mm -hmm. or an end right. point. Mm -hmm. And that's the goal, A-C-H-I-E-V-E. -E. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit smarter than smart, mm -hmm. though I didn't call it smart. That, that would have been cheeky to call it that, but it, mm -hmm. it's, it's the achieve model. Mm -hmm. Right. I love that, you know, and, and there's so many pieces in there that that we all hear about, you know, like the 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 H, the, you know, you it needs to be a hard goal. Otherwise, you know, kind of why bother? But it doesn't have to be impossible, um, you know, right. and, and I, my background is marketing. And one of the things that, that, you know, people talk about sometimes is you have BHAGs, big, yeah. hairy, audacious, yeah, audacious goals. goals. Yeah. And those are, you know, they're they're. They're kind of the, the the ultimate wish list of a goal. You know, I want to be a billionaire. Might be yeah. a BHAG. Yeah. Okay, is that achievable? Eh, I mean, we, we don't know that it's not. But is it so difficult to achieve that we're not going to get there and then get so disappointed that we give up? So That's maybe right. it's okay. I want to be a millionaire by the time I'm age whatever. You know, or, you know, or I want to make $100,000 a year by the time, I, you know, and, and so yeah. when we have those goals that are achievable, mm -hmm. that's the, the thing that I think is, is more important. Um, and, yeah. you know, and, and then all the others, you know, visual, I love that, you know, we do vision boards. Uh, I don't know yeah. if, they, you know, it's, it, I, I did one, it's here on my wall. I look at it every once in a while and think, well, that's pretty, yeah. <laughs> you know? but, but yeah, having that go. So like, maybe, you know, we, we were talking about, you know, the, the person who wants to get promoted, they yeah. see themselves in that corner office. That's right. That's right. Yeah. You know, they've, they've got that nameplate on the door and maybe they right. even do it. Um, you know, right. I worked one time with a, a group uh, of students and I told them, you know, they were getting ready to graduate from college. And I said, I want y'all to make business cards mm. that have what your future goal is. And, and, you know, or your future job title, I think was what I told yeah. them. And I said, because then when you give it to somebody, you can say, Hey, you know, my ultimate goal is that I'm this. And this, and then I made him go around the room and I said, tell me what, you know, tell me what, what you're, you, and this one young girl, uh, one young woman said, I want to be a future white house press secretary. Mm. Now that's a heck of a goal. 
Yeah. The day before I'd met somebody who was a former White House press secretary. And I said, I need the two of you to talk. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and so you never know. So yes, yeah, sometimes those things have a way of taking on their own life. But if she had just said, I want to go into communications. Yeah. No, I mean, that that's mm-hmm. something that came from within and mm-hmm. she put it out there. Right. She put mm-hmm. it out there and she had it in her mind that that's something that she wants to work mm-hmm. towards. And there's going to be an intentionality mm-hmm. to how she goes about her right. day and her mm-hmm. week and her month and mm-hmm. the the decisions that she makes mm-hmm. and the jobs that she may right. take and the people mm-hmm. that she meets, mm-hmm. how she's going to prepare for that mm-hmm. person that you yeah. so graciously, mm-hmm. graciously are going to introduce her mm-hmm. to. And that's really everything about what we talk about, which is let's not let's not have the day happen to us. Right. Let's happen to mm-hmm. the day. Mm-hmm. Let's have a little bit more intentionality mm-hmm. and let's work towards these goals that are meaningful and consequential because right. mm-hmm. they came from within. Mm-hmm. That is actually how to live with a little bit more purpose. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's all that elusive. I think right. if we're working mm-hmm. towards things that emerge from within mm-hmm. that are going to really impact us and the people we care about or our organization, mm-hmm. then that's how we live with a little bit more meaning and purpose each day. Right. You know, and we're not saying that any of this is written in stone. No. Things change. Um, oh, yeah. You know, I totally lost touch with that young woman. I wish I had had kept in touch with her because who knows where her life took her. But, but you provided the spark. Yeah. But you provided yeah. a spark oh, yeah. for her. Yeah. Well, and and she might have met that person and gone, oh, no, that's really not what I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, it's, uh, again, you don't know. At, at, first of all, you don't know how to get there, you know, and, and yeah. so you've got to have that kind of road map. Yeah. And you need to know when you're there because when you've reached that goal and that's, yeah. you know, then what, you yeah. know, then you need to develop your next step in the process. That, that, that's exactly right. And um, you, you, you mentioned something important, which is when you have achieved it, I would even say for double clicking on that, mm-hmm. there are even milestones along right. the way. Mm-hmm. And I would encourage people to really celebrate mm-hmm. those, those milestones mm-hmm. because we, we may set out with a bit of a lofty goal mm-hmm. and the science and the research behind mm-hmm. ultimately achieving that lofty mm-hmm. goal. Let's say, you know, it is to run a marathon, mm-hmm. uh, sticking with, with that example right. I used before. If somebody hadn't really, hasn't really done that before, and they're going to go from uh, running a mile to a 5k mm-hmm. to a 10k, et cetera, really one doesn't need to throw a full on mm-hmm. pizza party for one for, right. the, for that achievement. Mm-hmm. However, there should be a, Hey, mm-hmm. I ran a 5k today. Right. Mm-hmm. I achieved this, this milestone. Mm-hmm. And that's sort of on the, if, if I shared with you and the audience, the what or the construct of the goal, mm-hmm. we also have eight components of how to achieve. So once mm-hmm. you've plugged in the coordinates mm-hmm. into your GPS, once you're on the road driving to your destination, right. there are eight pillars mm-hmm. um, that I suggest also going back to mm-hmm. the body of uh, positive psychology, goal mm-hmm. setting theory, et, et cetera. Mm-hmm. One of which is to celebrate the successes mm-hmm. along the way. Right. Right. And it can be a private celebration or a public exactly. celebration. You know, or I, a public celebration. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of big on the public celebrations. Um, you know, because it's and and it, it's funny how even if it's kind of little, your family, friends, whoever, you know, are 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 gonna be happy for you. And if they're not, well, you don't need them anyway. Um, I did back in June, I did a cancer survivors uh mm. thing, and it was 30 miles in 30 days with mm. your dog mm. and and you know and, and so basically you were supposed to walk a mile a day with your dog yeah, yeah. doesn't seem like a lot now uh, i'm in georgia <laughs> and, <laughs> a little hot. it was a little warm um you know and and so i got up early or we'd go fairly late you know we've got a big trail behind the house that's safe now you know you're not going to be out on it in the dark but um and and so, you know, since it was through the American Cancer Society, of course, very well organized, they had, you know, and, and so you plugged in, here's what I did today, and it would give you back graphics to share with your friends. Um, yeah. You, of course, got a t-shirt along the way, all these things, and, and they were really wanting you to post pictures of your dogs and, and all this. And I mean, it was, I did 30.2. <laughs> I love it. And, I love but it. it was, and, you know, people were like, and I did have some people say, wow, a mile a day, whoopee. And I'm like, for this couch potato, that's quite the, the thing. Um, yeah. And in Georgia heat. Well, you, you also, you know, you hit on the best way to create something that becomes habitual is to do it about 15, 20, 25 times. Mm-hmm. If you sort of get into, and my guess is now 
the 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 Georgia heat aside, mm -hmm. my guess is it became a little bit of your right. routine, and mm -hmm. there was may have been a longing to mm -hmm. do it the next day, maybe right. the next day, uh -huh. maybe not thirty like other days in a row, mm -hmm. but becoming a part of your life. Right. You know, and and obviously there were health reasons for it. Um, yes. you know, getting out and and you know not not being sedentary and you know going you know and and, and it was right because my husband always went with me. Now he he walks a lot. He you know he's he's you know, a mile for him was absolutely nothing. But, um, you know, it was so it was, it was a way for us to go. It really was, you know, it was and, and yeah, like I said, it was little a mile a day, you know, but but, but 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 yeah, it was this, this gets back. But mm -hmm. this gets back to exactly. Mm -hmm. But it was meaningful to you. Yes. We don't care about mm -hmm. what other people think. Yeah. This is not these mm -hmm. aren't should goals. Mm -hmm. These are could. What could mm -hmm. I do for the next yes. 30 days? Mm -hmm. That would be meaningful. Right. Mm -hmm. Not somebody else's value system of what you should do. That would be right. meaningful mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. This is meaningful mm -hmm. to you. This is yeah. consequential yeah. to you. Well, and by making it public, right. it also made me accountable because if I skipped a day or two, people would post and say, hello. Yeah. Are you? And I was like, you know, okay, it's 108 today. <laughs> you know? yeah. And they were like, well, okay. You, um, you, you hit on one of the crux. So I mentioned the eight pillars of how to achieve your goal. And I'll show on the screen mm -hmm. those eight pillars because mm -hmm. one of we, we spoke about uh, celebrating right. success. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Look at what you just said. Sharing yeah, share your goals, your goals. Mm -hmm. creates this accountability, mm -hmm. right. this transparency, other people, this interdependency where mm -hmm. other people say, hey, Deb, I did something similar a mm -hmm. few months ago yep. and this routine really helped mm -hmm. me. But that notion of sharing your goals mm -hmm. and, you know, there's there's been several studies done where if somebody thinks about a goal, there's a certain mm -hmm. percent of it, a certain percent chance of it happening. If you mm -hmm. think about it and write it down, there's a right. greater percent mm -hmm. chance of it happening if you think mm -hmm. about it write it down and verbally tell somebody mm -hmm. there's a greater percent chance of it mm -hmm. happening if you think about it write it down verbally mm -hmm. tell somebody and hand them a document or or an email or a text mm -hmm. that's the platinum standard mm -hmm. for right. this i'm sharing it with you there's mm -hmm. a bit of a vulnerability i'm a little bit accountable mm -hmm. and by the way i may you may even have some good advice you know for me because mm -hmm. there's right. there's interdependency mm -hmm. there yep. so that you know those are you, you hit on two mm -hmm. of the eight already mm -hmm. Um, right. and I'll, I'll take the image off screen, mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, that's, you're absolutely right. right. You know, and, and you know, whether you're doing this individually or a team, you know, so maybe it's a work team or, that's you know, right. all those, the, the, it's just, it, it, you know, and, and I know you have a sports background um, and you played baseball in, in your youth. I see, I did read your book. <laughs> you, um, you, really, and, you really did. Um, but it, it really is, you know, yes, we can accomplish a lot individually. But there is something about the group oh, yeah. think Absolutely. that helps us, um, you know, and, and and I think a lot of it is when we're struggling, that group helps us. It helps us to say, OK, what can we do? You know, all of these other various things, as opposed to just I'm, I'm giving up. Absolutely. Inviting people into the process. Um, and if, if it's not if it's a, a single solitary type of event, you can invite other people in and share it with them. Right. If you do, yes, I had 24 mm -hmm. other baseball uh, like teammates on my mm -hmm. team that, but also it, you have to be willing to open yourself up and mm -hmm. to really like have that interconnectedness or that connective tissue between mm -hmm. and among your teammates as well. So mm -hmm. part of it, you have to be open to it as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, and your, your entire premise is that we're working and living with purpose. You know, yeah. it's not just, you know, I'm, I'm going to work because I have to go to work. I'm doing this because I have to do this. Now, there is some of that in there. I mean, you know, of we got to pay the bills. We got to do all of those things. Yeah. But I think, you know, one of the things that the pandemic did, obviously mm. lots of bad stuff, but it made so many people rethink. So what have you found? I mean, was it, have you really seen, you know, in the last couple of years, people going, oh my gosh, you know, even if it's just, I'm not going back into an office ever again, have you seen more people going, I need to figure out what my purpose in life is? So I, uh, people have been asking, I, you know, I started doing this actively and intensely six years ago. So people were asking these questions and mm -hmm. I've had north of 3000 Mm -hmm. basically, you know, career mm -hmm. discussions and overall sessions. So the question, did the rate pick up mm -hmm. during the pandemic? And I think a little bit and not, not hugely, mm -hmm. you know, noticeably in a way that, oh my goodness, but I think people had a little bit more time, a little bit more time by themselves mm -hmm. to reflect. 
and ask and maybe begin to answer the, mm -hmm. some of these bigger questions of, huh, is this kind of how I want to spend my day? Mm -hmm. People have been asking that for a really mm -hmm. long time. So I, I, I have seen it and you're absolutely right. There are things that we have to do. And I, I talk quite a bit about, yeah, I mean, we, we have to pay for school. We have to pay for uh, healthcare. Mm -hmm. And I don't live in a world of unicorns and rainbows, mm -hmm. but you know what, Deb, we spend four to five days a week, eight to nine to 10 to 12 to 13 to 14 to 15 hours a day, mm -hmm. maybe even six or seven days mm -hmm. a week. Why can't we try to infuse some of the tasks or the actions or activities mm -hmm. that actually light us up, that maybe energize mm -hmm. us, that we enjoy, that reflect mm -hmm. a little bit more of who we are, that right. exercise some of our strengths. Mm -hmm. Maybe not the whole day and maybe mm -hmm. not every day, mm -hmm. but the research says, uh, one of the people that I really look up to in the space, his name is Marcus Buckingham. Mm -hmm. And I've been reading his work since the late nineties. Mm -hmm. And he has a book out called Love Plus Work. And he says, according to the research, you need about 20% of your day to be working on things or interacting with people that, you know, that you really enjoy mm -hmm. that kind of go to the heart of how right. you want to express yourself. Mm -hmm. Not a hundred percent of your day, mm -hmm. but how do we get 20% of your day? Mm -hmm. And why not, why not try to do that? Why not mm -hmm. sort of go about our job, kind of lean into the job as opposed to, you know, that Dunkin' Donuts commercial when I was growing up. <laughs> gotta I'm, I'm make the donuts. Gotta make the donuts. <laughs> gotta make the donuts. Mm -hmm. You know, if Gallup, shared that about 30% of people are engaged in their work mm -hmm. and people almost resign to the fact that I'm not going to be engaged and fulfilled by my work. That to me, Deb, is the greater resignation, mm -hmm. Right. accepting that. Mm -hmm. And I start off the book by, you know, the first quote is by Henry David Thoreau in Walden, which is the mass of people lead lives of quiet desperation. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in, among people that I've worked with and I've been there as well. Mm -hmm. We spend so much time. It's such a shame mm -hmm. for us to not reflect, examine, mm -hmm. maybe try to relaunch or re or just think about our day in a slightly different way. And if it involves changing positions, then so be it. Right. But oftentimes there are things that we can do mm -hmm. on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. Yeah, I was saying maybe just an attitude shift as opposed to I've got to make the donuts. I get to make the donuts. Right. I have you know, an opportunity and, and, to make yeah, the donuts. Yeah, you know, and and you know, I, I'm not going to complain about it. I'm going to smile at people. I'm going to say thank you. I mean, you know, just sometimes some subtle shifts make a huge difference. Um, you know, Absolutely. And, um, but yeah, it's uh, one of the things, and and we've certainly seen this, and you talk about it in the book too, is the fact that so many times we do just enough to mm. get the job done. You know, and, and we're not, and, and maybe it's because we know doing extra is not going to get us anything. Nobody cares. Um, yeah. You know, which ooh, that's really sad. But, you know, I, I think people have been doing that, that resignation part long before. I mean, you know, uh, we've all I done it, right? Where it's like, I don't like this job. I really want another job. So I'm not going to do anything extra. Yeah. When this, the bad part is doing extra might have actually made it better. Um, but, but yeah, we're just doing the, it's it, kind of the short time mentality, which sometimes is, you know, 30 years. Yeah. And sometimes doing a little bit extra, you know, inside, like there's a sense of satisfaction of, you know, you, mm -hmm. you did really good work mm -hmm. and I don't know about not people appreciating. I think your teammates may appreciate if you work mm -hmm. on a, yeah. on a team or I mean, rarely do we do everything in isolation and we're only, so, so there's, there's a trend now I think started two or three weeks ago, this term called quiet quitting. I had never heard of it right. until a New York Times mm -hmm. journalist. I, I was reading out. about that just today. Yeah. And she reached out to me. I was in mm -hmm. five paragraphs in the mm -hmm. Times piece the other day. And so what my thoughts were about quiet quitting, I said, mm -hmm. that's a real shame. Mm -hmm. uh, and right. it's it, if we're doing the bare minimum in order so we don't get fired and we mm -hmm. still get our paycheck, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe there was a reset that needed to take place. Somebody was burnt out and all of that. that that's That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Uh, to take that time and reclaim that for the self. What the term and some of the the articles that are written, what they're not talking about is let's have a can let's let's have a converse a grown up conversation mm -hmm. with my manager or right. the manager should have a grown up conversation mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's an opportunity to dig a little bit deeper mm -hmm. and not just say okay for the next X number of years 
I'm going to do the bare minimum. Mm -hmm. Like that, is that really how we want to spend Ew. our time? Yeah. Do you really, and, and then is it going to spill over with, I'm only going to do, <coughs> excuse me, the bare minimum with my spouse, with my family, with my faith. Right. That's just I also sad. wouldn't want my doctor to do the bare minimum. I wouldn't want my <laughs> pilot to do the bare minimum and, and other professions right. as well. Right. You know, and, and you mentioned talking with your manager. I mean, I think that's so important because you know, as we said, sometimes it's why do extra because nobody cares. So have that conversation with your manager, your boss or whoever, and say, you know, what would happen if, mm. and, yeah. you know, and, and, or, you know, even though I don't feel appreciated now, I mean, you know, it could cost you your job, <laughs> but it, it, sometimes it's like, well, maybe that was the, the best thing that could happen. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, if you think they're not going to notice, why aren't they noticing? You know, yeah. and, and, yeah. and more than likely they're in that quiet desperation mode too. So it could be that they need you to say, you know what? We don't say it, but I think you're a great manager. Um, yeah. you know, um, yeah, it just, it, it, little things like those little tiny things sometimes make a huge difference to someone. Well, that, that, that's one of the, there was an article I wrote a couple of years ago after doing a thousand coaching sessions. Here's mm -hmm. some of the things that I've learned. And oftentimes it's not a complete 180 degree, complete mm -hmm. change or a huge goal. We're going to climb that mountain. It's small and smart changes to meaningful things can have wildly powerful right. outcomes and mm -hmm. impact. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's funny. One of the things I do in my other life is um, I'm very involved in the dog show world, mm. beagles in particular. Yeah. And so I'm actually chairing our beagle national, which takes place when we're recording is actually when this goes live, I'll be at the national, okay. but we're, as we're recording it, it's five weeks out and it, it's a lot of work. I mean, it's 10 days worth of show. I mean, all sorts of stuff and, and it's fun. I enjoy doing it, all those various things, but it can be stressful. And so a couple of days ago, I had one of those, I'm going to go build my, my tent fort in the living room and have wine days. I mean, it was no, you know, I it just, and totally unexpected. From somebody who I didn't think knew any of this that was going on, sent me a message and said, I just want you to know how much we appre I appreciate what you do. Uh, yeah. It was like, okay, that was better than any tent fort or glass of wine. Um, you know, and and I mean it just it it really made my day. And yeah. so, you know, I think we all need to be thinking about that. You know, even it, whether we think somebody's stressed out or not, just sending them a hey, I appreciate you type of of message. I I, I can't agree with you more and for the managers who are out there, actually for anybody who you know that people, that, that you care about people and, and they care about you, but let's focus on the managers for a moment. It is a basic human need for the employees to feel valued and cared right. for mm -hmm. and validated. Mm -hmm. And so much so, and this was proven out in all the data, I mentioned Marcus Buckingham before, mm -hmm. the Gallup organization where we hear about employee engagement, they have the mm -hmm. Gallup Q12, these 12 questions. Mm -hmm. And there are a couple of questions that get directly at do the employee, do you feel cared for? Do mm -hmm. you feel cared about? Right. Has somebody taken time to talk to you about your career? Has somebody given you feedback mm -hmm. um, and talk to you about, you know, where you might want to be? Mm -hmm. And all of this goes to the heart of, does somebody care about me? Mm -hmm. And you're spending so much time and you're giving so much of yourself to this. Um, it's as managers out there, please remind, some employees may need it more than others, mm -hmm. but right. it's a basic human need. Everybody mm -hmm. needs it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We need those attaboys. Absolutely. You know, and, and I think it's harder now with people who are working remotely, um, yes. you know, because it, it was real easy to pop into somebody's office and, and say, hey, Matt, great job on that project. Yeah. Now you have to, first of all, you have to recognize, oh, yeah, great project, you know, but then you have to take the time to send the email to, you know, all those various things. Right. And before you can do that, five other things come up, you Absolutely. know, and, and so it's, it's just a little bit or... It, like we said, sometimes just that smile. I mean, you know, there's memes that go around all the time that say, you know, smile at somebody. Might be the only time today somebody did. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and that's that I think is one of the hardest things about the pandemic still is the lack of socialization. Um, you know, I, I haven't been to an in-person networking event since before COVID. <sighs> now, I do a lot of online. I mean, several yeah. things probably sometimes a day. But that social, hi, how are you? Hug, you know, handshake. Yeah. That's we miss that. You, you, you're talking even the smile. You're talking about that's a connection. Mm -hmm. Want to feel connected. We don't want to feel alone. 
and this comes up a lot in my work. I, as effective as Zoom or video is, mm -hmm. and you and I are, are having a great discussion right. led by you, mm -hmm. and this is great. And there are offices that are working okay remotely. Mm -hmm. I really do encourage, if maybe it's not going to be 100% full-time in the office, that it's some type of a hybrid approach mm -hmm. because I really feel like there is no proxy for that in-person smile if it's appropriate, you know, to hug uh, and to sit down and walk into somebody's office and close the door and say, hey, I really appreciate you stepping up in that meeting. It was a tough question that you answered. It was clear that you prepared the night before. Right. That's not going to happen. We're not going to schedule Zoom for you and no. me to have that conversation. And that goes, that, that's the fuel that sort of mm -hmm. drives that employee engagement, ultimately a really good job. And just like people talk about culture, mm -hmm. the culture in the office, right. you know, and how people or mm -hmm. the culture in the company, that's how people mm -hmm. feel about working in that environment. Right. You know, and, and yeah, hybrid is weird. Um, you know, I have, I have not worked in an office in over yeah. 20 years, but you know, companies are still trying to figure it out, um, you know, as to, to whether, what they're going to do. And, and of course, you know, about the point where we think, oh, everybody's going back to work, you know, something else happens. And, you know, and, and, and I think, you know, so many companies really did discover, okay, we don't need the, gazillion mm. square feet of office space, right. you know, and, and employees obviously appreciated the fact that, you know, in some cases, obviously this doesn't work, but, you know, maybe working at midnight, they're as mm. productive as when, you know, as somebody else at 9 a.m., you know, and so being able to give your employees flexibility, obviously being mm. able to be home with the kids, the spouse, you know, all of those various things. So mm. I think that's why, you know, many people, or being able to work anywhere. I mean, you know, that's the other thing is, yeah. you know, for many people, they just have to be where they have internet access. Is that yeah. the beach? Is yeah. that, you know, wherever? Um, and so, you know, they they do that. But yeah, the, the little things of, you know, seeing somebody at the coffee maker and yeah. saying, you know, hey, great proposal. Deb, you're, you're so right. And, you know, after this call, I'm going to head into this, the New York City and I meet up with my clients mm -hmm. there in, in an office. And this happened to be happens to be an office where they've mandated that everybody comes mm -hmm. back five days a week in wow. you know, 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Mm -hmm. And the the two founders, they fervently believe that there are thousands of micro moments mm -hmm. that happen during the year yep. that are not replicated mm -hmm. as good as this medium is that you and I are on mm -hmm. right now. Right. It's not replicated there. And I would even say for the younger folks, for the analysts, for the associates, for the VPs, mm -hmm who are learning a lot by osmosis mm -hmm. and hovering and, mm -hmm. you know, how does Deb answer that email mm -hmm. or how does Deb talk on the phone? And they're not picking that up. Right. So the, mm -hmm. there's thousands, if not hundreds, mm -hmm. I don't even know how to quantify of mm -hmm. data points and behavior and observations mm -hmm. and things that I think some of the younger folks are not learning as much right. during the, in this sort of, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's, it's hybrid or uh, remote. Well, if it's mm -hmm. hybrid, that helps remote work. So I do encourage those managers and those, the leaders who are listening, how can we get people together, especially for folks who are, they learn by observing. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and it is a challenge, um, but I think it's something that we can do, you know, and, and uh, it's, and it's funny because the people who in, initially said, oh my God, I hate this mm. were the micromanagers, right? Mm -hmm. Are the ones that wanted to be able to walk by and see what you had on your computer screen. Well, those people, their heads have either gone, <laughs> you know, or they have figured out they yeah. can trust their employees. I mean, I had one person tell me, he said, you know, how do I know they're getting the work done? Yeah. And, and this was somebody who was going to put the programs, you know, that did keystroke management, all of that stuff. And, and I said, do you trust them? when yeah. when in the office and i said and if that answer is no then they shouldn't have been an employee i mean you know sure. you know and if you did trust them in the office why are you not trusting them out of the office yeah you know yeah. and 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 i know you know it's it, it, the temptation is to screw off and but you know and and but i think people figured uh, out you know all the different ways to adapt i i think there's a way to fend against that and to make both mm -hmm. sides more comfortable, the potentially the micromanaging or just the manager, the boss and the employee. We were talking before about, and for the audience, I'm holding up the, the game plan. Mm -hmm. uh, so this, this might be, I was positioning it earlier as there may be some career outcomes, maybe a personal outcome that we want. It's also 
let's say you and you're you're my boss mm -hmm. and i say okay uh it's it's january or february by the end of the year what are the what are three or four or five mm -hmm. meaningful outcomes right. mm -hmm. that would say you know matt you did an amazing like mm -hmm. this is really excellent work mm -hmm. you're performing at a high level what are those outcomes mm -hmm. so we create i create right. as the employee i create mm -hmm. this document i give it to that the, the notion of mm -hmm. sharing your goals i give it to mm -hmm. you and then you know, okay, well, I didn't see Matt today. I actually haven't spoken to him in the last couple mm -hmm. of days. I know I'm meeting with him in, in two weeks for a one-on-one -on -one, mm -hmm. and we'll provide sort of the progress made yeah. against right. the goal. Yeah. But I, I know that what his GPS coordinates are and what he's mm -hmm. working on and towards mm -hmm. so I can take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. And this is what I've done when I was an executive. Mm -hmm. I had one of these game plans. I gave it to my executive leadership team. I gave it to my marketing leadership team. Mm -hmm. I gave it to the entire marketing. Right. And I asked, so we knew what, what we were doing, mm -hmm. whether we saw each other or not. Right, right. You know, and, and it, it, it all comes down to communication, um, yeah. you know, and, and, and being honest, you know, because sometimes somebody else's goal isn't achievable by you, <laughs> you right. know? And so right. that is where sharing things, you know, is, is such a benefit. You know, if you've shared, say you're the, the, the team leader, and you have said, okay, here is what we want to achieve by the end of the year or six months or whatever. And your staff, your employees really don't think you can do it. Yeah. They need to be honest and say, here's why we, as yeah. opposed to now, or, or worse, they don't say anything, then it's not achieved. And then everybody gets all bent out of shape. Uh, 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 absolutely. And that communication, that two-way communication is absolutely vital. Right. Um, and one of the elements of the how to achieve is also identifying people who can be of assistance mm -hmm. to you. So tapping into mm -hmm. tapping into the experts, you know, the other benefit, Deb, of where there's an agreement, you're my boss mm -hmm. and I'm working on these things. It's also helpful, almost act as a, acts as a deflector shield. Mm -hmm. You know, if you say to me two months from now, I say, hey, man, I'd like you to take on kind of this project and this right. project. Is it what? <laughs> and I might say, well, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So these were the outcomes that we were working towards. Let's look at that. Right. And are you saying in place of these, mm -hmm. in addition right. to, mm -hmm. if it's in addition to, let me check the resources, mm -hmm. you know, that I have. So right. there may be infinite opportunities that an organization or we all have, mm -hmm. but there's finite time and energy. Right. Mm -hmm. One of my clients is Alex Rodriguez, the former baseball player. Mm -hmm. And he has a game plan. Mm -hmm. And he has, like all of us, there are lots of things that he could do and, and how he could spend his time. So sort of infinite opportunities, mm -hmm. tons of noise out there, mm -hmm. but what are the three or four signals that he's going to spend his time on going through each day, almost acting as that deflector right. shield. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, one doesn't have to be him with his schedule and the opportunities. We all have this tons of mm -hmm. noise. Let's identify the signals mm -hmm. and let's be mm -hmm. vocal about those signals right. with the person mm -hmm. who's managing mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And so it, it, it can actually, mm -hmm. you know, serve a, a really helpful purpose mm -hmm. um, as one's navigating the day and the week. Right. You know, and this goes for any age level. You know, I was just thinking, I just finished watching this, this fun little series on, on uh, cable, Mozart in the Jungle. It's about professional mm -hmm. um, uh, musicians. And the, the, you know, there's a, the main character. And she decided when she was really young that she wanted to play oboe, which, you know, that's mm. kind of a, you know, what, you know, she wanted to play oboe in one of the major orchestras. And so she would practice four and five hours a day mm. on the oboe. Um, yeah. but, um, <laughs> but, but, you know, it was one of those things where you could tell she had her goals. And I'm sure there were other things because she was very young, like I said, um, when supposedly in the story. And so there would have been, especially as a, as a, a kid, you know, hey, we want you to come do this. Hey, we want you, you know, and even if it was just go out for sports or, you know, do something different. And and she had to sit down just, you know, and, and think, okay, now can I cut my practice to three hours yeah. and still accomplish what I want and be able to go play volleyball or or whatever, um, you know, and and so it's, it's but I think it's important as, as your know, parents are talking with their kids to say, okay, you only have a finite number of resources and time, you know, grades are probably going to be pretty high on that probably, list, yeah. but that all depends on, you know, on, on lots of other things, um, you know, and, and so, yeah, what's, what, it, you know, and, and, you know, we're, you know, if it is for some kids that the, the great thing for them is to go to a trade school. Okay. Yeah. What do you need to do to work toward that? Um, you know, and, and so I think it's a great thing to be starting early 
with having these game plans. Well, it, and, and what you're what you're really outlining is let's be intentional about what we're going to do tomorrow mm-hmm. and the next week and the next month, not just let things happen to us. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's how and everybody's at that inflection point mm-hmm. when you're talking to that 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 mm-hmm. example you're saying about where might you want to go to school, mm-hmm. this college or maybe a trade school. Mm-hmm. That's an inflection point mm-hmm. where the person goes will determine the direction right. where that where mm-hmm. and. But it's asking, it's it's what I, I sometimes f- uh, phrase it because everybody I talk to is everybody's fast, everybody's busy, everybody's mm-hmm. moving really fast. I say, let's slow down mm-hmm. to speed up. Mm-hmm. Let's have that conversation. Right. Where mm-hmm. are we today? Mm-hmm. Where are we today? Let's all look at the different facets or pieces of your life that are contributing to how you're mm-hmm. feeling. Where are we today? What matters to you? What do you value? What do you see yourself doing in the future? Then we begin to mm-hmm. pen. We don't like pen the goals immediately. Mm-hmm. But we we create the game once we understand ourselves a little bit, where we are, what we value, what mm-hmm. energizes us, what lights us up, um, what matters. Um, then we begin to identify where mm-hmm. we might want to go, and that's the great time to say, "Huh, how might we want to get to the trade school? Mm-hmm. Or what are, what are the qualifications mm-hmm. to be a White House press secretary? Mm-hmm. I know I'm really young, mm-hmm. but there I've identified like maybe I can find out the seven or eight things, mm-hmm. and maybe I could begin to work. Mm-hmm. That's acting with intentionality mm-hmm. at that moment, that inflection point, mm-hmm. um, and that's all that the book really talks about. Yes, we have specific tools mm-hmm. and that people can use. You mentioned the game plan, and there are these other things, but it, it, it's to get at where we are today and where we might want to be right. tomorrow, mm-hmm. and let's be thoughtful. Mm-hmm. about and intentional to use mm-hmm. that word yet again about how we're spending our time because the exact opposite is that i'm going to mail it in today mm-hmm. i don't really i'm not really mm-hmm. engaged in what i'm doing i'm not really excited by what i'm doing and then years pass by and right. that to me mm-hmm. that that's why i wrote the book that people ask mm-hmm. me why i wrote the book that to me is one of the saddest things mm-hmm. that i hear that right. um maybe you know not only days or months or mm-hmm. but years have passed mm-hmm. by yeah. And, you know, we, we, we each have a song to sing uh, and it doesn't have to be singing the song in front of 18,000 people at Madison, right. Square, Madison Square Garden. Mm-hmm. It may be volunteering mm-hmm. for the local cancer, you know, cancer research. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we really want to do. Um, but l- let's identify what that is right, right now. Mm-hmm. And let's sit down, take out a piece of a pen mm-hmm. and a piece of paper. Let's be intentional about mm-hmm. how we spend our time. Right. You know, I mentioned in, in your bio when I was reading it that you are a coach. You're a certified coach. I think that's very important. You talk about mm-hmm. it in your book as to, a lot. you know, a we lot. can all say, I'm a guru. I'm an expert. I'm a coach. But just like, you know, you're going to go to a doctor and say, are you really? Do you, do you, mm-hmm. <laughs> you're, you're saying you're a cardiothoracic surgeon. Do, are really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and but but you have that training and, uh, you know, and, and that expertise. And, and I love that. But one of the things you also talk about in your book is that you coach people who are kind of doing that change of career. You mentioned Mm -hmm. Alex Rodriguez. Um, You you worked with a lot of former athletes. Um, Military would probably be another one where there's just these changes. And, but it happens to everybody. You know, we can reach a point where it's like, you know, we're changing. I was talking to somebody just yesterday about, you know, women who have stayed home and done the absolute most important thing in the world of raising their family, you know, but then they want to go back into the workplace. So yeah. how do they make that ahem, pivot? <laughs> you yeah. know, hate that word yeah. now, right? Um, but, yeah. you know, it, it's, it is something where they really are, you know, and, and it doesn't matter. It's, you know, many times you see people, they retire, they want to do something different, all of these things. So, you know, how does somebody go about when you know when they've kind of reached that transition time where they're they're going to say hey i'm going to do something different what are you know what are the steps that you kind of walk through them with yeah and i'm I'm happy to walk through the audience walk the audience through some of those steps i i want to comment on something that you said at the outset the training was really important to me Mm -hmm. especially given the explosion of coaching and how it's really come onto the scene that anybody can call him or herself a coach and i I and everybody on my coaching roster, mm-hmm. we all studied in, in rigorous uh, programs mm-hmm. because there is a science behind the yes. coaching mm-hmm. conversation. It's very uh, reflective mm-hmm. in, in nature and very and supportive and empowering. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's different from a 
mentor, advisor, consultant. So mm-hmm. there, there's a lot of content in, in the book mm-hmm. about that. But if somebody is considering working with a coach, mm-hmm. I would ask him or her. Check uh, out their the bona fides. Quali- <laughs> what the quality, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I'm so glad you asked this question. And there's there's no reason to shy away from the word pivot. I think pivoting is at that moment, that point, that inflection point, we may want to go in a slightly different mm-hmm. direction. Okay, so what do we do? There's one exercise in the book that, and anybody can download these materials for free. You don't have to mm-hmm. buy the book. Um, and you can download this. The exercise is called the sources and drains of energy. Mm-hmm. And it gets at what I call the why. Like, what mm-hmm. is it that drives you? Like that is emerging from within that, like when you're doing it, you come alive. So imagine uh, a sheet of paper with a, a line drawn down the center of it. And on the left-hand side is the sources of energy. On the right-hand side of that line is the drains of energy. So think about what you do on a day-to-day basis, if you're working or not working, and what are some of the tasks that you're doing that are a source of energy versus those that are a drain of energy. And it could also be, you can go back into your mental archives. There may have been previous jobs that you have and had. There may have been board seats that you did. There are other extracurricular activities we're basically getting at in those moments that you remember where the, was it giving you energy or was it taking energy away? And I guarantee you that if you do it over the course of, I generally say two weeks, and, and this is something I did, Deb, too. Uh, when I, I went from executive to executive coach, from chief marketing officer and C-level executive to you know working one-on-one with people, um, I did it for two weeks working with my coach of 12 years. And I had six or seven, seven sheets of paper. I looked at them before I met with him and I identified the various buckets that they were in. And I saw that, what were the themes? What were the common themes? Okay, so I wanna see people, I derive a ton of energy from seeing people grow, develop and thrive. So I may have been in a sales role or I may have been in a marketing role, but the people who reported to me, I was like completely energized when I sent them, gave them the opportunity to go meet with the CEO or presented a meeting mm-hmm. or sent them to a course, a leadership mm-hmm. development course. Okay. That was, that was my, that's my why that sort of drove me in complement to that. There's another exercise called the hy- generation of hypotheses. So even prior to doing any of these exercises, you may have a hypothesis of something that you may want to do. Mm-hmm. I want to be a head of human resources, or I want to, well, whatever that may be. And I recommend that you generate three, four, maybe five. I did five, but that may be too many. Inherent in the word hypothesis, Deb, is that we're going to test it. Right. Now, these hypotheses are informed by Mm -hmm. the why work. So the why and then the what. So what what is emerging from within? And that's the energy. And then what could that look like? Mm -hmm. And we have maybe a list of three, four, or five of those hypotheses that we might want to do. I'd like to work part-time at a local something. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we move to the how. So Mm -hmm. why, what, how, how might we bring that about? Everything is pedestrian Mm -hmm. as, okay, we may need to generate a resume or a LinkedIn profile. And I know you're the absolute expert in that. And we may need to polish up on our interview prep, but really where the money, not but, and really where the money is made is by knocking on doors and talking to people who are doing that work basically trying on the clothes to see how it looks and it feels versus being on the rack. Okay. Hypothesis one was to be the head of human resources at a fortune 500 company. I've spoken to a couple of senior HR people and they're basically saying it's more about lawsuits and other things. And that actually is not getting at my (laughs) why, which was to see people develop, grow and thrive. So maybe it's more of a learn. So I cross that hypothesis off Mm -hmm. or I refine that hypothesis into more language that maybe I discovered something along the way that I didn't really know or I confirm that hypothesis. I refute, refine, or confirm Mm -hmm. that hypothesis. So the why exercise is what emerges from within for the sources and drains. Going back on the base of what we've done um, in our our current and our past Mm -hmm. careers, what could that look like? Generation Mm -hmm. of hypotheses. And then the how is pounding the pavement and engaging others, phone calls, texts, Mm in-persons, all that. Um, And yes, you may have to have your LinkedIn profile and your cover letter. Right. You know, and it's, I I love that process because it's funny, a lot of times we think about it right as we're getting out of college. Um, We do informational interviews, you know, and and all of these things. And it's something that we should be doing all the time, you know, and and part of that is just the education, you know, keeping up on things. And 
you know, because I think it's, it's so important, you know, maybe you are that HR person. Okay. Right. You know, then you need to be keeping up on, on law. You know, I was talking with somebody who said, oh my God, when everybody started working remotely, our lives went berserk mm -hmm. because all of a sudden we have to worry about, okay, if they're in different states, do we have to pay taxes in those right. states? Right. You know, all of these various things. And and for some people, they're like, ooh, I love this. This is great. For other people, they're like, no. <laughs> well, exactly. That why the so that may be a source of energy debt. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it is, it's something that I think that the, what I got most out of talking with you, reading your book, all of those, is that this is something that every day we mm. need to think, how am I going to live today? with yeah. purpose yeah you know and we've only got about five minutes left Ugh, yeah you know this this is one of those where we really could go on for hours because this is, yeah. is so interesting to me so we definitely have to have you on again but tell people how they find you how they work with you we'll have a link to the the book in the in the notes but tell us more about the specifics on how you work with people yeah so i and my team work with people one-on-one -on -one and that or, or we work with teams and also we we work with kind of the broader organizations. Mm -hmm. But specifically, there is a career coaching approach, whether mm -hmm. I sort of think about it as career strategy, optimization. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that involves where, you know, we they literally move from one job to another or mm -hmm. it's reimagining or rethinking. Mm -hmm. And the, the executive coaching is more performance in the role. Mm -hmm. I think about it me for, for myself, I, the headline is, just kicking butt in life. Mm -hmm. And that involves, you know, your career where you spend a whole chunk of your time. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of your identity for better or for worse. Um, it's how we support our, we pay for where we live and how we eat. So cr kicking butt in, in, in your, in your life involves your career mm -hmm. and on the job. Mm -hmm. So it's a performance coaching, which happens to focus on career and in your role. And all of it is supported with, um, you mentioned health and wellness at the outset, and that's something that kind of steeped in in, in education. Mm -hmm. And I know enough in some instances to identify people on my team who are nutrition experts mm -hmm. and who are the personal trainers, right. et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, so we, if, if people want to reach out, they can find me on LinkedIn. It's Matt Spielman on LinkedIn. You can go to our website, which is Inflection Point Partners llc.com it's a mouthful but inflection point partners llc.com um, and the book outlines much of what we spoke about mm -hmm. is detailed in the book and some of the feedback has been that it's really attainable and it's, mm -hmm. it's a fairly quick read mm -hmm. and all of the tools everything that i talked about right. is in the book mm -hmm. um i do want to punctuate something that you said which is yes we're talking about goals and future mm -hmm. goals um, but what what can we do now and this sort of maniacal focus on today Mm -hmm. One of the things, and I'll leave this with, with your audience, one of the things that I do with my clients, sometimes on a daily basis, mm -hmm. is I may text them in the morning and I say, I may say something like, Deb, if today is a great day mm -hmm. and we you can register a win or a W for mm -hmm. today, what are the three things that will have happened today? Mm -hmm. And it's called winning the day is the exercise. This is mine. Mm -hmm. This is mm -hmm. mine. And I just helped for the audience. I just held up a little small mm -hmm. card and I wrote three things on it. Mm -hmm. People always want to get to four or five and I, I'll right. let them get the four, but it's focus and prioritization mm -hmm. uh, for, you know, what might be things that you're going to start doing. You might continue doing, and you might complete, we don't always complete mm -hmm. things, but let's focus on those three, mm -hmm. maybe four. Right. And that would make for a winning mm -hmm. day and beginning, so set the intention early mm -hmm. and begin with that end in mind. Mm -hmm. And that's how we sort of set sometimes a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and again, those are manageable goals. It's yeah. not, you know, I, I, now granted for some people, it could be, I'm going to run the Boston marathon today. <laughs> but, well, <it> may, rarely. <laughs> only if it's that right. day, right? You know, and, right. and so, but yeah, for, for, for somebody else, it might be, I'm going to walk half a mile today. Right. Right. You know, or I really want to, mm -hmm. I want to put myself in the best mindset for mm -hmm. Deb's discussion today. Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. I did my morning routine mm -hmm. and I sat down and I was really excited to talk to you. That yeah. was on, that's, that's one of my three. Oh, I love that. You know, and, and for some people it, it really could be, I'm going to get through the day, um, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and because, you know, it is a challenge, you know, and, and, and it's, for many people, it is a struggle and, you know, it's just, there are times that are rough. And so I, I'm saying that because for some people, those little goals, 
those are okay. They're yeah. they're big goals to you. Absolutely, I I, I couldn't I, I echo that any any more strongly. Well, Matt, like I said, we have to do this again, and, and more importantly, we we do because I think this is such important information that we need to be getting out for people. Um, yeah. Because yeah, we can talk about here's how you do this with your business, and here's how you do that. But yeah. if we're not right in our hearts and in our heads. It's not going to make any difference at all. So, you know, I, I really look forward to the next time we have you on. Until then, do you have any final thoughts for everyone? Yes. Uh, and I, I knew you were going to ask me this. So I want to, uh, I'll spend a little bit of time in, in closing with uh, somebody. I, I read Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning and had an incredibly powerful impact on my life. And I encourage the audience to, to read it. In the book, and this gets back to the career and pivot there are some times where these unwieldy questions of, well, what is my mission? What, what is my purpose? And what is my, I, what, I, what, what those, are, Victor Frankl said in Man's Search for Meaning, that that's a really tough question to, to grapple with. And um, it's, I guess, easy to ask, hard to answer. So he suggested that we, you frame it differently. Instead of saying, what's my, my meaning in life or purpose in life or mission in life, it's what is life asking of you? And it frames it from the outside in, and it will, if you even just say that, hmm, right now where I am, what is life asking of me? Or what is this situation asking of me? Or what is my family asking of me? What is my team asking of me? What is my, What are my employees that the person who started six months ago, and I haven't really met with him that much, what is he asking of me? It, it gets us out of our, our head, and it also generally will tap into the things that give us energy as well. I love it. You know, that is an absolutely best way to end the program. I am Deb Creer. I've been having such a wonderful conversation with Matt Spielman of Inflection Point Partners. Can't wait to do it again. Until next time, everyone have a great day. Tune in for our next program for even more trends, best practices, and techniques for how to make your business a success. The Business Power Hour, hosted by Deb Creer, is proud to be part of the C-Suite Network.